Hi, this is Steffi and welcome to The Financial Fox. Today I will be joined by Dr. Mark Van Heyman. He's a visionary strategic futurist, founder of the FutureWise Institute and known as the digital speaker. We discuss artificial intelligence, we chat GPT as well and uh, the great opportunity that artificial intelligence is bringing to us I use ChatGPT myself and I'm sure that many of you are using different AI tools to uh, make your work uh, better to help you in your daily conversation and uh, yeah also challenging ChatGPT why not see where this artificial intelligence can help us. Now, there are lots of intersections between AI, the metaverse, the future of innovation, blockchain. So today we just um, highlight some of the opportunity and also reflect on some of the risk and the concern that we should have with this massive innovation push on artificial intelligence because uh, yeah it is quite a powerful tool and uh, with anything that is so powerful there are also risks that we should think about it anyway if you are not subscribed to our youtube channel click the subscribe button now and follow us on social media to stay up to date with our news and interviews and if you have any comment or any request please reach out to us on social media Anything with crypto, AI, and innovation, we are here to bring you amazing guests and amazing conversation to share. Before we get into the interview, let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor, EMG. EMG is a Web3 telecom super app that aims to be the first to revolutionize the way you interact with digital assets on your smartphone. Instead of switching between multiple apps, you just need to download one. The only one EMG Super App is your one-stop destination for instant messaging, video calls, e-commerce, travel, money transfer, and many other exciting features. So with EMG App, you can stay connected with your loved one, send money, pay your bills, book a taxi, shop the latest product, and even build your own digital store all in one place. Can it be the next switch out or Amazon? Well, watch this space. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, Steffi. I'm very good. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, today I wanted to talk about AI and the metaverse. I mean, uh, there is so much said about artificial intelligence, about chat GPT, about all the new tools uh, from artificial intelligence. They are coming out and they are making our life easier. And then uh, on the other side, you have got the metaverse the virtual world, the metaverses, you know, whatever shape is going to be, that is kind of uh, taking more and more of our lives, of our time. And also, you know, many people claim that that is where our future is going to be. So I wanted to go through that with you today, but maybe to start, just give us a, a quick introduction uh, about yourself and why people know you as the digital speaker. <laughs> Very good. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Mark Verheim and I'm, um, I am indeed a strategic futurist, also known as the digital, view, uh, digital speaker. I um, d- deliver keynotes uh, and I help large organizations, Fortune 500 companies, to understand uh, emerging technologies and how they're going to change their business and how these, t- uh, these technologies change society. I've been doing that for over a decade um, and obviously when the pandemic hit, I couldn't fly anymore. So um, I decided to change, uh, change my concept as a speaker and I created the digital speaker. Um, allowing and, and with that created myself as an avatar as a hologram um, and allowed myself to deliver keynotes as such so uh, way before the metaverse became a thing um, I created myself as a hologram and avatar um, and uh, turned myself digital and I, I still practice those kind of things so I really believe in, in practice what you preach so um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm building a, a hyper realistic digital twin at the moment uh, which hopefully at some point will um, look like me talk like me move like me sound like me um, has my body of knowledge so uh, you might as well be talking to my digital counterpart uh, at that time um, and um, I've written several books uh, five um, uh, to be honest to, to be exact 
Um, one, my fourth book was about uh, the metaverse, called Step into the Metaverse, and my fifth book was uh, is called Future Visions, which was actually written by ChatGPT. I dare to say I, I was the first person in the world to publish a book with ChatGPT because it came out a week after ChatGPT came out. Um, so um, obviously there are now hundreds of books written by uh, by and with ChatGPT, uh, but um, I, I think I was the first. Um, I also delivered the first. A TEDx talk in virtual reality a couple of years ago, which was quite quite fun. Um, and as you said correctly, I I, I recently started the, the Futurewise Institute, which focuses on elevating the world's digital awareness uh, to ensure a thriving digital future. Because I'm not necessarily convinced that we'll end up in um, you know a, a, a positive digital future. Um, you know, I call myself an optimistic dystopian, uh, which is a bit of you know an oxymoron. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's it's. Um, I, I do believe that 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 we're not on the right track. But I also believe that we have um, you know a very slight window left open uh, to make a change and to to get us back on track. Uh, though it will require um, a lot of work. Wow, that's quite uh, a lot and some really cool stuff. What uh, app do you use uh, to create your uh, your avatar? So I'm, I'm currently using a MetaHuman um, to, um, to to create it, um, and um, 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 you know you have several other to tools there there at the moment. Um, there are quite a few tools to to clone your voice. Um, I'm actually also building an entire masterclass uh, by my digital twin, um, which is quite cool, which will be published and available soon um, so there's all kinds of cool, cool things that you can do with, with, these, with these technologies it's interesting because I wonder always how the machine can learn about the way you act right it can maybe easily replicate your, fi your figure your you know your physical appearance but what about the way that you interact your body language you you know these are things that is not so easy to train a machine isn't it i think it yeah i, th I think at the moment that's still quite challenging but i think um, uh, um, it's a matter of time if you, if you have sufficient data then you you can copy that you know i can clone my voice now with three seconds of my voice uh, and that's enough to to create a realistic copy of myself um so i i'm i'm, I'm i think we don't need much data to 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 mimic my mo my movements which are you know belong to me which are a, a unique sort of a unique identifier of, of who i am uh, i don't think it will be too difficult to um, um uh, to clone that no okay so let, let let's stay, take a step back and um, define what is uh, generative ai because that's all we are talking about right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so generative AI is, is really where we sort of create um, synthetic content, synthetic media, synthetic data, synthetic videos, um, you know, you know, where you um, uh, we have these large language models um, uh, such as uh, GPT, uh, of which GPT-4 is the latest at the moment, uh, at the time of speaking. Um, and by, by having these long, large language models, we can communicate um, um, with the computer in a completely novel way. Uh, we don't have to uh, be able to be an artist anymore. Uh, we don't have to be able to code anymore. We don't have to be an author anymore because we can just talk um, to um, uh, to the computer, to the AI, and have a conversation with the AI, um, and um, it creates whatever content or whatever app we use to create whatever content we want to create. So nowadays, we can use ChatGPT to create all kinds of content, uh, written content, uh, to to do um, you know, medical exams, to, to act like a, a like a, a sympathetic uh, doctor, to um, help with your copyright, <laughs> which is I think the majority of people doing, um, and to um, uh, but you can also create images. You know, you, um, I use Midjourney. Uh, uh, almost on a daily basis to create images uh, that are really really nice um, um, you can use all kinds of tools to uh, to create 3d assets um, to cre create entire 3d virtual worlds um, and you know, uh, to create music audio clone your voice um, you know all these kind of things are all part of sy synthetic media um, and um, um, driven by generative AI uh, that allows us to do that so ChatGPT is basically the main app, let's say, but there are some other da apps built on ChatGPT that maybe specialize on uh, something specifically, which could be a video, could be, um, you know, code or could be something else. So the way that I kind of like see ChatGPT is like, for me, it's a great assistant, right? So you need something, oh, ChatGPT, can you write that email? Oh, ChatGPT, how do I say that? Oh, I'm saying that right. So, you know, it's quite, it becomes quite handy to make your workflow more efficient efficient but uh, what I wanted to ask you because you know you are even wrote a book with ChatGPT so 
what else people can do with ChatGPT and how they should actually use ChatGPT. And also, it would be quite cool if we can, if you uh, can maybe mention some of, some of the app they use ChatGPT that people could maybe try for specific purposes. Sure. So, so it's true that a lot of the AI apps out there um, use uh, ChatGPT or uh, use actually GPT, uh, so uh, OpenAI's playground um, and their API. Um, <coughs> however, you know, there's a lot of tools who are who, who don't use that. You know, for example, Midjourney has nothing to do with um, a GPT, um, uh, and they have created their own generative AI to, to create images. Same goes for Stability AI, uh, Runaway ML. Uh, you know, these are all uh, platforms that have their own generative AI uh, that have nothing to do with. Uh, uh, GPT. So I think that that's a, that's an important distinction with ChatGPT. Um, so from a, from from a ChatGPT perspective, you, you can do all kinds of st stuff. Yeah, yes, you can use it as a copywriter to write emails, and uh, it won't be very long before I write a word to you, and, and my chat, my ChatGPT turns into an email, and and, and your ChatGPT summarizes it to one word, and then you, <laughs> we have just AI talking to each other, which I don't think is a very uh, you know good f future to look look forward to uh, but that, that's one thing that you can do uh, but you know people use it to to, to help them with their with, with, with the programming with coding um, um, doctors help it with uh, with finding um, uh, you know being uh, sympathetic to to uh, to patients to knowing what to say to to come up with with di diagnosis to um, uh, help in, in legal uh, uh, perspective uh, to get the right answer or whatsoever so the, the, the possibilities are enormous and I think that the, the most important thing with with ChatGPT is is asking the right prompt you know um, um, uh, there's a new uh, job title prompt engineer or AI whisperer and you can you can uh, earn between um, uh, around three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year uh, with just uh, a basic Python knowledge and, and uh, a good langu uh, English language skills um, um, and to, in order to, 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 to deal with this so it's, it's, it's a very lucrative job at the moment um, and um, <coughs> the, the, the challenge is to really have a conversation um, and, and not be satisfied with um, your first answer and, 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 and really push the AI um, to come with a better answer and, and ask questions and 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 uh, you know, what I often do is um, I have a um, if I need some help with, some, with writing something for example <coughs> um, I uh, write something myself uh, I ask it to critique it um, and to come up with ways to improve it um, and once I've done that I ask it now based on your critique based on your improvements um, improve this piece of content um, and, and and then I have a back and forth conversation and and this can even easily easily be you know, 10 20 prompts uh, for a, a piece of piece of text a piece of code piece of whatever I'm, I'm, I'm using it for um, in order to get to get the best results so it's not that you should expect you know a, a, a one-stop shop to get an easy answer um, that's anyhow I think a dangerous thing to do because a lot of um, uh, these large language models they hallucinate um, so they, they they come up with other nonsense um, uh, uh, about people, about facts, about you know, uh, 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 even about math, you know. And um, I think if you not if you if you rely on on the first answer that you get back from from uh, uh, ChatGPT, which I fear a lot of people are doing because I think it's such a handy tool, um, I think we are moving in the wrong direction because it, it first of all it reduces all your self criticism, your your, uh, your analytical skills, um, and you get fed a lot of nonsense. Um, and uh, we still need to think for ourselves because yeah. <laughs> the moment we stop thinking for ourselves, I think we have a challenge. Somebody was telling me that basically the response is like a gathering of spam and is what the average person would accept as an answer, right? So there is not, the, so like the, the, the answer that you get is the response that you get is like the average response. Do, do you agree with it? Well, look. These large language models, they are um, um, very, very, very advanced uh, predictive analytics, tool, analytics tools. Um, so uh, uh, given word A in the context of B, um, it is most likely that word C will follow, followed by word D. Um, that's all it does. Uh, you know, there's no consciousness, there's no sentience in that. You know, that that's all it does. Um, so it, you could argue it's sort of a mirror in our collective intelligence, in our collective conscience. Uh, what, what we just dump on the internet, what we write in our books, um, right, because it's, it has been fed on all, in all our books, you know, all our internet, every, every web page, you know, etc. So it just gives back to what it finds most on the internet. Um, and obviously, therefore, there are biases embedded within, uh, within it. But in addition, it, it, it comes up with nonsense. You know, for example, when I was writing Future Visions, uh, uh, I asked 
ChatGPT, which was at that moment ChatGPT uh, uh, was uh, based on GPT-3, um, I asked uh, ChatGPT, um, how did uh, AI and robotics converge? And it just stated, you know, in the 1980s, AI and robotics converged to create self-driving cars. If anything that would have happened, <laughs> we would have been in a totally different society by now. So, you know, it's, it's, you have to, we have to be, you know, um, um, conscious of yourself. And yes, there's a lot of nonsense in it as well. Quick break and back to our sponsors. The EMG Super App includes an NFT marketplace and a selection of e-games that helps you to earn as you play. EMG partners with Polygon, which makes the transaction super affordable, and it is powered by EMG Coin, a utility token that used to facilitate transaction within the app. Spending in the Super App get you rewards and access to exclusive deals. EMG is funded and supported by Meldi Group, which has been providing technology services to the world's largest telecommunication company and partnering with household names for over 20 years. The group employs over 20 highly experienced software engineers and it has millions of active users worldwide. EMG is revolutionizing the global network of communication infrastructures. And if you'd like to find out more, the links are in the description. So if we look at um, the investment that is going in the space, it looks like it's a war between titans, right? You see Google, you see Microsoft, you see Facebook. And uh, obviously the reason is because you need lots of money to power artificial intelligence progress. So what's your, it's difficult to say, what's your view? What do you tend to think is going to happen? Is will be a consolidation of these superpowers and then eventually one is going to win or there will be different kind of ways to approach uh, um, artificial intelligence. And, and also it will be nice to think actually that the, the new ideas, the small company could actually take part of that game without getting screwed, right? Look, there's a lot of things happening in, um, um, and there's a lot of things um, uh, co coming together in this question. And um, yeah, it's, it's logical that um, you know, these large companies um, um, are building these large language models because, as you correctly say, these are very, very expensive. You know, um, Elon Musk um, just announced Truth GPT as sort of a counterbalance to OpenAI only a few weeks after he said we should pause AI development of large language models. So, yeah, for whatever it's worth, whatever he's saying. Um, um, and I think he, he bought like 10,000 GPUs from NVIDIA worth, I think, 25 million or so. Yeah, yeah. So you need to have you know, serious funds in order to, to build this. That's also one of the problems that we um, uh, we have moved away from building these models in academia, uh, uh, which generally have you know have ethical boards oversight boards you know and an ethical process and and have a more long-term perspective to um, uh, short-term focused uh, shareholder driven um, uh, corporations who lack that oversight so I think that is a, that is a problem in itself um, and you know, at the same time you know we see this fight between these very large companies to build ever and more advanced uh, AI systems because they know that these ever more advanced AI system can bring them ever more money. We only have to look at OpenAI, you know, with their tools that they have sort of killed hundreds of startups um, um, with who are b b building stuff in this area, and all of a sudden, you know, they they have taken over that with 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 with, with their tool, so they can make enormous money. I think Sam Altman even said that he believes that they can capture a hundred trillion dollars of the world economy, um, which is just mind blowing. Um, and I'm not, I I don't think he's 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 wrong there. You know, I don't I don't think he's just talking bullshit there. So, so that is a real big problem. Um, and at the same time, uh, we really move fast because everyone has fear of missing out. Um, yeah. Well, in fact, we should stop and start to think what's happening and what we're doing. Um, and because these AIs, they are not aligned with, uh, with human values. They are extremely powerful. They are neutral. Um, so they're, they're not good or bad. It's based on what, what you do with it. But by the fact that it has just been open to the world, now we have 100 million people who use this technology, um, um, who use it for all kinds of good and bad stuff. And yes, for open AI, that was you know, extremely lucrative. 
because first of all they made tons of money secondly um, um, they had a hundred million people training their AI system within two months which is just insane but from a societal perspective it's not the necessarily the best approach so yeah uh, I, I, I do I, you know, I, I mentioned at the start you know I'm sort of an you know, just optimistic dystopian and this is the dystopian part uh, because um, yeah, I mean I, I don't think we're moving in the right direction uh, because the more intelligent AI becomes the more um, challenging it will become to to rein it in again. Exactly, exactly. Maybe, maybe we need the license. Uh, uh, we need companies to get license to use AI. Or uh, you know, an another point that uh, if we are talking about the dystopians, then there is the security, the privacy aspect. Yeah, well, that's that's only a, one thing that that comes to mind. You know, it's it's. Um, yeah, anything that you put in ChatGPT um, can be read by OpenAI, but that's the same thing with your, Word, your your Google Docs. You know, everything you write in your Google Docs is read by Google. So um, um, we, we should. That's one thing that we should be aware of. Um, but th yeah, that's a big that, that's a big problem. And you know, I think what you know what we're, what we see happening now because ev everyone is moving at such a breakneck speed, which is cool from an innovation perspective. From you know, I love it from an innovation perspective, but from a society perspective, I don't think it's good. You know, um, recently a couple of weeks ago um, or two months ago, I think, um, uh, Snapchat released um, uh, their virtual AI thread based on GPT-4, which allows, you know, Snapchat has 700 million users or so, allows anyone to chat with their virtual friend. And uh, uh, Tristan Harris, uh, at, a, at a show a couple of weeks ago, uh, at a presentation, um, uh, sort of gave uh, evidence that this virtual friend just promotes pedophilia and child abuse. Um, and um, here are 13, 14, 15 year olds talking to their virtual friend who encourages a 13 year old to have sex with a 30 year old. I think something's going wrong in society if we allow that to happen, but. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, uh, I, I completely agree with you. Now, if we uh, talk about AI and the metaverse, the conversion of these uh, two of virtual world that is taking more and more of our time and then you know all the opportunity and the risk of artificial intelligence what do you think being a healthy marriage that's a difficult question um you know, I'm, I'm, uh, when i wrote my book step into the metaverse um, last year i thought i thought that um, a hyper realistic metaverse is still um, at least seven eight years away uh, mm. which will allow us to to get used to it to 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 to, to this new uh, world where you know instead of having to go on the internet uh, and making an active decision to go on the internet we will be in the internet and the the internet will be as pervasive as the air we breathe now with generative AI, I think that's all changing because uh, you know um, where it used to be very very difficult to build virtual worlds, I can literally type a story now, and the virtual world is being built in front of my eyes. Um, so I don't have to learn any coding, I don't have to learn any game engine. I can literally think and create. I, I think you're. From a metaverse perspective, that's brilliant because we get a lot of cool virtual experiences. I've seen augmented reality experiences on the fly being created at the moment, which is possible. So from that perspective, that's really, really cool. But we should also think about the downsides. You know, if if um, if that's if that's possible, and now maybe the, the next scenario might be a bit far fetched. But you know, if I have a, a sleek AR glasses um, in the next couple of years, um, um, I can literally filter out people in the street that I don't that I don't like. And have them replaced by something else. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't like man with brown hair. I'll just filter out all the man with brown hair, and I replace them by I don't know, whatever. You know, um, and but of course they're not gone. Um, <laughs> you know, the moment you take your glasses off, they're still there, um, and that will create you know a lot of polarization. If you think that the polarization uh, um, that was caused by social media was bad, and that's only child's play as what uh, at what we can expect in the coming five years. So, um, yeah, we have is a really big is, challenge here. Is this uh, full in into personalization? Because that's what generative AI is basically focusing on, um, you know, doing something that should be good for you, should be better for you, should be more helpful for you. So, like massive personalization of the world in front of us. Is that the right way to go? And I'm thinking, is that going to be bad for society because you know sometimes uh, when you are dealing with people there is always a compromise you can't be 100 percent yourself because then you are gonna hurt somebody else feelings is all all life is a compromise right so i'm thinking is this hyper personalization good 
I, I don't know. Um, um, you know, my, my dystopian side says no. My optimistic side says maybe. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 um, I, I think it, 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 it can result in significant challenges for society. And, you know, it, it also really removes away um, our, our, our free will, our, our, our own decision-making capabilities, our, our cognitive processes, because it's all being done for us by our AI. Um, you know, I, I like to use my brains and think critically yeah. myself and have in-depth conversations about this stuff and uh, yeah I, I don't want an ai to tell me everything and anything to do at any moment so that i don't have to think about anything anymore you know what what's the whole purpose of life then you know so i don't i I'm, i don't know if this is a good thing you know i think it's it uh, we already live in a world where you can't really get get rid of this, this kind of stuff uh, but i think sometimes it's 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 it's, it's good to 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 think critically yourself and to 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 be in control, you know, and to remain in control. And we've lost already so much control of our lives um, um, uh, by everything we do online. Eh? We, we think that we have control online, but we have zero control online. Um, and how far do we want to bring this? You know, do we want to bring it as far that at some point we'll have brain computer interfaces and, uh, you know, um, uh, I, don't have to, I don't have to think anymore because my, my AI thinks for me, you know? <laughs> um, uh, or a, a corporation prevents me from thinking certain things um, because I'm not allowed to think that. Um, how far do we want to go this, you know? Um, from, a, from, a, from a, you know, societal, pers from a capitalist perspective, I know we'll get there um, uh, because it's just FOMO. It's just, you know, it's just um, this constant way of further going down the rabbit hole, um, uh, acting out, out of self-interest uh, because everyone acts out of self-interest or if, if, if even only one person acts out of self-interest, then eventually everyone will act out of self-interest. Um, we we end up in a in a in a in a yeah, suboptimal state, um, and I don't think that's a, good, a very good a good thing. In, in this metaverse scenario, where you have got the physical and the digital really uh, immersed together, right? So so there is not much distinction. What's the role of the government? You talk to government, you advise governments, and and w what will be their um, their role in in this metaverse powered by AI? Well, I think uh, the, the 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 role of the government um, is to ensure regulation, um, and not so sh not some not so much. I think um, uh, regulating innovation, because I think that's n n that's not that not always a good idea that the government decides to regulate something that they don't understand. Um, but I think they should regulate. They should create a framework um, that will take care of that regulation, regardless of the type of innovation we're talking about. For example. Um, it's really weird that anyone can just release AI that will mess with our brains while we cannot release any drugs that will mess with our body. So we have an FDA uh, for if you want to you know, release drugs uh, to the market, which is a very, very good thing, but we don't have the equivalent for AI. Why not? That's something that, they, uh, that, that the governments can regulate. Yeah. Um, um, in the economic world, you have ethics uh, oversights, you have ethics boards that determine whether you're allowed to do kind of research or not. Why don't we have Why don't we have that in the corporate world? Why don't we require that in the corporate world? Uh, you know, those kind of things. I think is, is is what governments can do. Let's not have governments try to regulate innovation because that 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 always works. Not doesn't work out well. Um, but let's let them create the framework so that the market can do this in the right way. And I think perhaps AI could help uh, when we are uh, trying to see interoperab interoperable solution, right? Interoperability is a big thing in, uh, you know, in crypto, you see now the US, uh, the European Union, the UK, they're all doing their own things. And, and, uh, and interoperability is very important as we are getting towards this uh, unified metaverse. So maybe that's where AI could help maybe on the interoperability front. Well, I think you know, AI will be able to, to um, help us with many problems in the world. You know, and I think AI, from that perspective, is a fantastic tool. Um, um, you know, it can help us. Uh, uh, give me ten. Give me ten. Give me ten <laughs> things that AI <laughs> can help you with. Come on. I, I can give you hundreds. You know, um, AI no, can help us. let's do ten. Let's do ten. <laughs> AI can help us find new uh, medications, new drugs, uh, 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 find diseases, uh, um, 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 help maybe restore the, 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 the rainforest, uh, uh, get us to Mars, um, um, create better food, um, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, help us with 
combating any of the wicked problems that we have in the world, that's something that AI can help us with. Um, and um, I think from that perspective, AI is, br is a brilliant technology. Um, but we need to guide it because it's such a power. It's such a powerful tool. You know, um, you, you're not giving um, a 13 year old a chainsaw. Asking her to clean up the garden without explaining how how, how the chainsaw wor works. You're not even going to give her one in the begin to begin with, you know. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's sort of the same thing. We have this extremely powerful tool in the hands of probably already a billion people, um, and um, we don't know really understand how it works. You know, we don't really understand what it, what it does to us, how it will affect us, how it will affect our decision making. How this is just one global uh, social experiment where we unleash this, this this flood of AI onto humanity without really understanding what's happening. And even if, if even Google, you know, uh, Pinch uh, I think is his name, uh, I forgot the CEO of Google, um, um, uh, said that they uh, saw their AI do stuff that they didn't expect, that they didn't train it for. And that's with relatively uh, um, 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 early days of large language models, of, of, of uh, the early days of advanced AI. Um, you know, fast forward five years, um, and, and a lot can happen in five years. Um, mm. how, how, how advanced will these tools become? Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, this seems a great note to um, terminate <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, Jaron Lanier, um, he's a, he's a well-known thinker within this uh, space. I think he's the father of VR. He said, and I completely agree with this. With, with this, he said, you know, AI will not kill us. You know, AI will, will not have like the, the the Terminator, the movie, the Hollywood movies. That that will not not happen. But but AI driving is insane, will kill us. Um, and uh, and I I yeah I. That's my dystopian side again talking, which I very, I very much believe in it as well. Mark, it was great to have you on the show. Listen, anybody that would like to follow you, where where is the best platform? Where are you more most active? So I'm active on Twitter um, uh, at Van Rijmenam. I'm active on uh, very active on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on my website, the Digital Speaker, where I publish regularly uh, on the on these topics. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Happy to connect. What's the next uh, talk that you're gonna give in person? Um, I'm gonna give a, a TED talk um, um, uh, um, uh, soon. Okay. Do we know where? No, no, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, like I, I cannot say too much okay, about okay, it. Okay, okay, we don't know, we don't know. We need to follow you. Okay, Mark, it was great to have you on the show. No, thank you very much for having me, Steffi.